tasty treat. It's been a while, hasn't it? On this episode of Lea Tortilla, I'm going to be showing you a truly British classic dinner, shepherd's pie, but I'm going to be doing it with swede and potato mash. What's the difference between a shepherd's pie and a cottage pie, I hear you say? Well, that would be the mince. For a cottage pie, you would use beef mince, but for a shepherd's pie, we're going to be using a thousand grams of lamb mince. Lamb, shepherd, get it now? So over here in my bright orange saucepan, I've got a dribble of vegetable oil, which I'm heating up nicely before I brown off my lamb mince. Now that my vegetable oil is nice and hot, I'm going to take my thousand grams of lamb mince, and I'm going to gently crumble it into the hot oil. Now my lamb mince is browning off nicely. I'm just giving it a good stir with my wooden spoon to ensure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan and that it gets a nice even coat of cooking. And it's brown all over. I'm going to add a pinch of salt and pepper, just to season the meat. Now that my lamb mince is cooked and fully brown, there's no more pink, I'm going to drain it over here to remove any excess fat. So that's just that. Don't wash this pan up, we're gonna be using it again in a second. We're gonna put it back on the hob. But that's all the fat coming out of that lamb now. Like I said, we're going to return our pan back to the hob and put the heat on. Unwashed, we're going to need all of that lamb residue in there to create more flavour. Once your pan is nice and hot again, we're going to add two finely diced onions. We're then going to add our favourite ingredient, three cloves of chopped garlic. And to our onions and garlic, we're going to add half a head of celery and four large peeled and chopped carrots. Then we're just gonna give these a bit of a stir, add some salt and pepper, and now allow this to cook for about three minutes and it will start to go nice and soft. And then we're gonna add our mushrooms. Okay, so our vegetables have been cooking for about three minutes now. You can see that the carrots and the celery have started to go a little bit glossy, and the onions and the garlic have started to soften. I'm gonna go ahead and add half a punnet of button mushrooms. And then, once your mushrooms have started to soften, we're going to add two tablespoons of tomato puree. And you're gonna stir that in thoroughly. At this point, I'm just turning the heat down slightly so that the tomato puree doesn't burn. I'm still stirring my vegetables and I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of English mustard. 
And now all of those ingredients are mixed through, we're going to return our lamb mince. Over here I'm boiling one pint of water, which I'm going to add two teaspoons of instant Bisto gravy powder. And to that gravy powder, one litre of boiling water, I'm also going to add one beef stock cube or stock pot. This is one of those dissolvable jelly ones. You can use a uh, lamb stock if you want. Not a problem, obviously, because this is a lamb dish. The only reason that I'm using beef is because it's got a more rich and meaty flavour to it. So I'm just going to dissolve these together. Once your stock and your gravy granules are fully dissolved in the one litre of boiling water, we're going to go ahead and pour this into our mince mixture. And we're going to give this a stir and make sure that if there's anything caught on the bottom of the pan, that it's all lifted up with your spoon and in there creating a wonderful flavour. Once you've stirred your stock into the mixture, we're going to turn our heat up just slightly and bring it to a simmer. Then once it starts to simmer, we're going to add one can of chopped tin tomatoes. And then once that begins to simmer, we're going to add some more salt and pepper. Stir that in. And then, in here, I have some fresh thyme and rosemary straight from my garden that I just picked a couple of sprigs and chopped gently. I'm gonna throw them in there now. And then once you've added your fresh herbs, we're going to go ahead and add one to two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This adds just a rich, delicious taste to your shepherd's pie that honestly, I couldn't go without it in here. And then we're just gonna pop a lid on it and allow it to simmer and reduce for around 30 minutes until the meat is nice and tender. But don't forget to check on it every now and then, give it a good stir just to make sure that it's not burning or sticking to the bottom of your pan. And as always, a list of ingredients are listed in the description below. Just before 30 minutes has passed and your meat is really nice and tender, you can go ahead and throw in 130 grams of frozen peas. Now, you don't have to add these if you don't want to. I just enjoy bulking my shepherd's pie out with lots of vegetables. I wish you could smell this, honestly. It's phenomenal. You guys don't know what you're missing out on. So 30 minutes has now passed. My lamb is nice and tender and it is smelling phenomenal, honestly you have to try this at home. So I've given my shepherd's pie mix one last season. I've given it a good stir and I'm going to turn off the heat. Yep, turn off the heat. And I'm going to transfer this mixture into my oven proof dish. And then we're going to smooth this down to make sure it fills our tray. And we're going to allow this to cool while we get on with our swede and potato mash. And stage two is the swede and potato mash that sits lovely and crispy on top of the shepherd's pie. And for that you'll need five large white potatoes. And if you'd like to know the exact weight of my five large white potatoes, that's 1,355 grams. And then you're going to need a whole swede. So with the swede we're going to top and tail it and then we're going to peel the skin 
and then we're going to cut it into equal sized cubes and place it in a pan with cold salted water and bring it to the boil until it's nice and soft and ready to the mash. Ready to the mash? Ready to mash. And then we're going to do the same with our potatoes, apart from we're not going to top and tail them, we're just going to peel them. So there we go, I've topped and tailed my swede. Now I'm just going to go at it with my speed peeler. Peel from top to bottom until my swede is completely skinless. So in this pan here, with my cold salted water, I have my equally diced pieces of swede. I'm going to place this onto boil over here. Now, you might be thinking, Leah, why don't you save time and space and boil the potato and the swede together? Well, that is simple. The swede takes longer to boil and cook than the potato does, so you can't put them in the same pan together because the potato will be done and it will be ruined by the time the swede is done. So you do them separately and then you bring them together at the end. Now that our swede is at a five minute head start, we're going to go ahead, cold salted water, equally diced sized potatoes, and we're going to Whack that on to boil. Once your potato and swede are boiled and they're soft enough to mash, you should be able to get a spoon through them. Just like that, no problem, and you're ready to go. Okay, my potatoes are about three minutes away from being finished, so I'm keeping them boiling on the back here. But for the meantime, I've drained my swede and we're going to go ahead and get mashing these while they're nice and hot because it's easier to mash while they're hot. So we're just going to get a masher and press into our swede until it's nice and soft, no lumps. Now that I've drained my potatoes, I'm going to add them to my already mashed swede. I think I'm going to put them in a larger bowl. So while I'm here mashing my potato and sweet together until they're combined and deliciously smooth, over here in this saucepan I've got 200 millilitres of double cream and 60 grams of salted butter and I'm gently warming them up and melting the butter into the cream to pour into our sweet and potato mash. Right. As we're mashing our Sweden potato mash and waiting for our butter to melt in our cream, we're going to add some salt and pepper. You want quite a bit of pepper in this, just because it adds to the flavour and it's delicious. I'm going to keep on mashing. Remember, we want it nice and smooth with no lumps. And once your butter has melted gently into your cream, don't bring it to the boil. We're going to slowly, bit by bit, pour it into our mash and mix it in thoroughly. Making our mash smooth, creamy and irresistible. Then once you're happy with your smooth, creamy, cloud-like mashed potato, you have two options. You can either spoon this straight onto your shepherd's pie, or you can place it in a piping bag and make it look really fancy with that. I'll show you both. The larger shepherd's pie that I made earlier was actually for dinner tomorrow night. So here is a little one that I've made to show you now. I've got my piping bag full of mash and I'm going to gently place it here so I can show you how to make it fancy with a piping bag. Just 
just as simple as that. Look. So delicate and beautiful and all I did was use a piping bag and nozzle. So I did the little delicate one with a piping bag and now I'm just going to dollop the remainder of my mash all on the top of this larger shepherd's pie that I will eat for dinner tomorrow evening. Now that you've topped your shepherd's pie entirely in mash, you're going to take the back of a wooden spoon or your maurice, like I have here, and smooth it down gently and evenly so it's completely covering the entirety of your shepherd's pie. Then we're going to take the back of a fork and gently just run our fork over the top of our mash creating these little lines and peaks of mash. You don't have to go in this upward direction if you don't want to, you could always do it sideways like that. It's up to you. Whatever works best for you. You can even like crisscross it, so like this, where I've gone over it. So from this stage here, the shepherd's pie will go in the oven at 180 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until the lamb is nice and hot underneath and the mashed potato has gone a golden and crispy delicious colour. And you see where I've created these little mashed potato peaks is where the heat of the oven is really going to catch onto that potato, making it extra crispy and extra delicious. And if you feel like it, you can always grate some cheddar cheese and chuck that on top. But I'm not going to do that because I feel it will take away the flavour of the swede. For now, I've put the large shepherd's pie away in the fridge, ready for tomorrow evening. But so you're not left feeling disappointed that you didn't get to see the finished result, I'm going to put this little one in the oven now at 180 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until it's nice and hot and golden and crispy. And would you look at that, 30 minutes later and she is done. Absolutely oozing with goodness. Smelling gorgeous. Let's dig in, shall we? This is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to have to put it down, otherwise I'm going to spoil it for tomorrow. Mm. Thank you for watching this episode of Leah Tortilla. I hope you've enjoyed this tasty treat. Now don't forget to give this video a like, give this video a share, leave me a comment because I love to hear what you have to say. And if you love what I do, then why not hit that subscribe button and you can see more tasty treats next week. Oh, and also, the links to all my social media are in the description below, just below the list of ingredients. I hope to see you guys next week. Bye guys! Just one more thing before I go. With this recipe, you can do it with beef mints instead of lamb mints. Make it a cottage pie instead of shepherd's. Okay, bye guys.